In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you exactly how to overcome performance anxiety forever. Hey piano people. I'm going to give you three steps that you can take to play with less mistakes and more confidence and calm. At the end of the tutorial, I'm also going to give you a bonus tip that's going to bring everything together. So make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video. The first step that you can take to overcome performance anxiety forever is to understand the physiology. In other words, how does it feel in your body when you are suffering from performance anxiety? For me, my legs shake, my heart beats really fast. And I have this recurring fear that I'm going to walk up to the piano and not remember any of the notes. Maybe you find that you get a little bit sweaty or your stomach gets nervous. This is all because of your body's fight or flight response. And I want you to know that this is normal. There is nothing wrong with you. This happens to everyone and it is a completely normal response to feeling stress or pressure like you feel when you have to play in front of other people or when you're trying to record a video of yourself. When we put ourselves in situations that seem dangerous, it activates the sympathetic nervous system and your body releases adrenaline. And that's why you get those physiological symptoms like shaky hands or shaky legs or sweaty palms your heart is racing. It's very similar to, I want you to think about like olden times. If you were a cave person and you were to go stand in the middle of an open field with no protection, you're putting yourself in danger potentially right? You don't know what the outcome of that situation is going to be. And so it would probably trigger your fight or flight response because there could be predators. There could be other cave people that might harm you. You have no idea what could happen. And so that's how that sympathetic nervous system gets triggered. And the same thing happens when you're going to record a video of yourself or when you're going to play in front of other people. While logically it's easy to understand that there's no threat to your actual safety, your body still perceives the threat. And so those physiological symptoms still happen because you feel nervous. The outcome is unknown. And that's really, really scary for the human brain to understand. When we can't predict exactly how something is going to go, it makes us terrified. And you are not alone in that. I find that simply normalizing performance anxiety and making sure that you understand that it's something that everyone experiences can be helpful in and of itself. Because when you find yourself in a situation where you're feeling nervous and you're feeling anxious and you are making a lot of mistakes when you try to play in front of other people, it can be really easy to get really hard on yourself and to feel like you are the only person in the world that struggles with this. I know that when I was in college, I was doing a ton of performing and competing and I was having performance anxiety. And I always felt like I was the only one because I would watch professionals get up on a stage and it seemed like they weren't nervous. And I would watch my mentors and my instructors get up and perform. And it seemed like they were not affected by what I was experiencing. And growing up playing the piano, I internalized this message. Like if you want to get over performance anxiety, you just need to do it over and over and over again, and then you'll become less nervous. And that was part of the truth, because of course, the more you expose yourself to a fear, the more you give yourself the opportunity to learn how to get through it. It's not that you do it a lot and then all of a sudden magically you have no performance anxiety. It's that by putting yourself through that fear over and over again, you start to develop the, the routines and the coping skills to be able to do it often with maybe less anxiety around it. A couple weeks ago, I taught a free class where I help you discover the three steps that you can take to sight read with more freedom and more accuracy every single time. If you miss this class, the free replay is available. I will put the link in the description below. If you are getting value from this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, comment below and let me know what you like about it. And then go ahead and share this video with another piano player so that they too can overcome performance anxiety. Step two for overcoming performance anxiety forever is to set yourself up for success by doing things that help you to feel calm. Now the cool thing about this is it can really be anything that helps you feel calm. You can come up with your own toolbox of things that help you stay calm, that maybe bring your heart rate down, that maybe help you feel a little less nervous in your stomach or that relieve your sweaty palms. And you can go to these things whenever you need them. If you're going to record a video of yourself, if you're going to play in front of one person or 25 people. And some of my favorite things to help me feel calm are to practice deep breathing. I know that that's a really common one that gets thrown around a lot, but it's for a good reason. Because when you 
inhale deeply and specifically when you exhale for a long time it helps your body calm down it helps combat the effects of that adrenaline it helps bring your heart rate down and so it will really take care of a lot of those physiological symptoms if you practice deep breathing i like to practice deep breathing in the hours leading up to a performance but i also like to just be really conscious about taking three deep breaths right as I'm about to start playing. It can be a total game changer. I also like to ensure that I am giving myself really positive messages that are empowering right before I'm about to play for others. It can be very natural and very normal for your brain to go into that panic mode and to start playing a script that might not be the most helpful. Let me know in the comments if any of these sound familiar. You're about to play for someone and all of a sudden your brain starts telling you things like, you don't know what you're doing. You didn't practice enough. What if you make a wrong note? What if you play a mistake? What, are, what is everybody going to think of you? These are not helpful things when you are about to play in front of someone else or when you're about to record a video. These statements will almost ensure that you make more mistakes. And so I like to stop those statements in their tracks. As soon as my brain starts to say to me, oh my gosh, what if you don't remember any of the notes? Oh my gosh, what is everybody gonna think? Oh my gosh, what if you can't play anything? What if you didn't practice enough? As soon as that starts to happen, I stop my brain and I start to insert more empowering messages. Things like, you can do this, you practiced a lot, you prepared, you know this piece, you can play so musically, you have evidence that you can do this, okay? Anything, it doesn't matter what you say, as long as you are inserting messages that feel more empowering and more positive to combat the messages that your brain is going to want to create from a space of fear. The third step that you can take to overcome performance anxiety forever is to have strategies in place for when the unexpected happens. Now, one thing that I like to clear up with everyone that comes to me with advice about performance anxiety is that oftentimes people have the wrong goal in a performance. If you are thinking that you want to try to perform perfectly or you want to try to play with no mistakes, you will likely fail. And that's not because you aren't good enough. That's not because you didn't practice enough. It's just because that's an impossible goal. We will never achieve perfection at the piano. Even if you were to ask one of the top 10 piano players in the world, if their performances go perfectly, they would tell you no. They would be able to tell you exactly which note didn't sound the way they wanted it to sound or exactly where they played a wrong note. No performance will ever be perfect. And when you hold perfection as the standard, you not only lead yourself down a path that often leads to a lot of discouragement, you completely miss the correct goal that will actually help you make a lot of progress towards your goal of being able to play with more confidence and more calm. So I like to say that the only guaranteed thing that will happen in a performance is that something unexpected will happen. Okay. And once you can accept that it, it changes the goal. It shifts your entire perspective and it also makes it a lot more clear what steps you can take to overcome those unexpected things. And when you think about some strategies that you could put into place for when those unexpected things inevitably happen, you have better problems to solve for and you will come up with better solutions. So now that we all know that unexpected things will happen, what are some strategies that you could have in place for when those unexpected things do happen? Maybe that means that if you're memorizing your music and you're playing from memory, you're going to work to memorize extra hard right? You're going to really make sure that you fully have this piece memorized so that you don't have any memory slips. Or maybe if you are worried about playing wrong notes, you can go through the piece and you can set little anchor points in the piece of like, okay, if I happen to mess up this part and it's a crash and burn situation and there's no going back, instead of going to the beginning of the piece and starting over, I'm actually just going to like jump to this next section. And you can make backup plans for when the unexpected things happen. And the other cool thing that happens is when you start to make strategies for the unexpected things that will inevitably happen, you feel a little more confident when you go to perform. And then the more you perform, the more you have data to inform what strategies you need. Right? And so this is a little bit of a feedback situation where you're going to make some strategies and then you're going to do your performance and maybe the strategies will help you. And also they might not the first few times, but that's okay because every time you perform, you gather data about what strategies you can implement or what things you can plan for in your practice so that if those unexpected things happen again, you have a strategy in place to deal with that. In January, I'm going to be teaching a four day event that is totally free. During this event, you are going to learn how to design a weekly practice routine that accelerates your progress 
consistently and moves you beyond the notes to confident musical expression. Please join me. It's going to be a fantastic time. We hang out in Zoom together. We get to know each other. The link is in the description below. I can't wait to see you there. All right, now for your bonus tip. Your bonus tip to overcoming performance anxiety forever is to practice memorizing your pieces and don't turn off the video. This is true even if you don't intend to play from memory because simply going through some of the ways to memorize your music is going to really deepen and strengthen your relationship with everything that's going on in your piece of music. And so the more that you work on that skill of memorizing, the better you get to know the piece regardless of if you're going to play it from memory or not. And when you can get to know your piece on a deeper level, it's going to help you feel more confident and therefore more calm when you are trying to play through that piece. If you want to know how to memorize your piano music forever, you can check out this tutorial that I did a couple months ago that goes through some tips and strategies that you can use to memorize your pieces on a deeper level right now. You can check that tutorial out right here.